Hello and welcome. You join me as ever at the start of another fascinating Maths with Mr Thompson video. Today we're going to look at the concept of probability trees and how we can use them. Uh, I've decided to try and find a kind of interesting application, a bit of, bit of fun, and that's around uh, one of my favourite board games, um, which is called Ghost Stories. It's a really cool board game, and it kind of throws up some, I think, rather interesting probability options. Um, just as a by-the-by, if, if you're interested in board games and you think that board games are all about Monopoly and Cluedo, then think again. You want to start looking at things like Talisman, which is a fantastic game, or Settlers of Catan, or maybe something like my personal favourite, a game called Pandemic. Uh, go and hunt these out. Get your friends around. I guarantee you'll have a few hours of fun with these games. What I'm looking at today is Ghost Stories, and this is a game which involves... Uh, basically, you, you, you're, you're defending this village and you've got ghosts coming in, attacking you from, from all sides and you've got to defend the village. The essence of it, the nitty gritty of it, is killing ghosts using dice. So basically, if you look at this, for example, uh, in this corner here, that tells you what you need to kill the ghost. So this ghost here, um, the blood drinker, has got a strength of 2 red. So to kill that ghost you would take these 3 dice, roll them, and you want to get 3 red dots appearing on the dice to, to kill it. Now, uh, what makes it kind of interesting from a probability perspective is uh, this side here, which is the white side. Because white is a, is a wild card, you can use it for any colour you like. So if you take a look, for example, um, uh, this guy, the, the Black Widow. The Black Widow's got a strength of two black. Now these three dice here has got one black and one white. I can use the white as a black, put them both together, and that would result in the death of the Black Widow. Okay, so you get the idea. You roll the dice and you try and, and match the number of dots on the card. And what makes it interesting is the white side is a wild card. You can use it any way you like. So let's just have a think about that. There's your each dice has six coloured sides, blue, yellow, white, black, green and red. So the probability of rolling, uh, say, a red over here is just one in six. So we've got one uh, side with red, there's possible six sides, so that's one chance in six or a sixth. Going back to what I said a minute ago about the, the white side being a wild card, if I wanted the blue or a white, as you can see, there's two ways I can get that. There's one blue, there's one white. Two out of six, which is a third. Okay, so that's the basic setup for, for what we're going to be looking at. Um, so let's take a specific example. Suppose we want to kill this ghost. This ghost is called the ghoul. It has a strength of one yellow. To kill it, we need two or three dice and have at least one yellow side or one white side roll up. We can have two, we can have three, doesn't matter, but at least one yellow or one white. So what are the chances of this happening? Well, we'll investigate it using what we're calling a probability tree. A probability tree. So just to recap before we get into the fun and games, there's, uh, we've got one uh, yellow side, one white side. So the total number of winning sides is two. From a possible of six, so the probability is 2 out of 6, or a third. Okay? Uh, and the probability of getting something else is 4 out of 6, which is 2 thirds. Okay, now I'm going to start building a tree. It's going to get a bit messy. It's going to get a bit messy. Uh, so uh, I think what I'll do is I'll use a little tick to indicate a successful throw, uh, and a cross to indicate uh, a failure. And if I get it right, maybe the, the colour coordination will stay with me. So let's go through this example here. On our first dice throw, we can either have a successful throw or an unsuccessful one. Uh, on our second dice throw, if the first one was a success, we can go up this branch, uh, or we can be down here with the with the failure branch, if you like. 
uh, and again on the second throw we could have a success or we could have a failure. Uh, let's keep building for our third dice throw. We have two outcomes from each of those little pathways. And each time it could be a success. Or a failure. Okay. Now, what we want to do is to try and attach some probabilities to these branches. So we know that every single time we get a success, it's going to be a third. And every single time we get a failure, it's going to be two thirds. Okay, so I could write all of these in all of these branches. Uh, but it's going to get a bit messy, so I'm not going to do it all the way down. I'm just going to leave it as kind of understood that I filled it all in. All the crosses have got a two-third probability, and all the um, ticks have got a one-third probability. Now, what I need uh, is to kill my ghoul is one yellow. So let's see how many uh, yellows we've got, or how many successes we've got here. If you come down this branch here, if you if you went if you, our three dice went yes yes yes, we'd have three sides saying the right thing. If it came down the second branch here, well, we'd have two sides saying the right thing there. And then by following each of these branches, we can see the next one. I've got two ticks on that little trail, one tick on that little trail. This has two, that has one, and that has one, and that has zero. So basically, I want uh, any branch which has at least one successful uh, tick on it, and that would be uh, that one would do me, any of these would do me just fine. Uh, but this one here is, is not what we're after. So what we have to do is we have to find the probabilities attached to each of these little arms and uh, and then work them out and, and add them up, okay? So here we go. Uh, this first branch, I've got a third, then a third, then a third, which is a third times a third, times a third, times a third, which is 1 over 27. Okay. Uh, this second one here is actually uh, a third times a third times two thirds, which is two over twenty seven. Now, if I repeat that, going all the way down all the atoms, it's uh, a third times two thirds times one third, that's two twenty sevenths. This next one is I've got one third times two thirds times two thirds is four twenty sevens, and then I'll kind of carry that down all the way. That's two. That's two twenty sevens there. The one is four twenty sevens, and the last one there is a one, which is four twenty sevens. And the very bottom one is two thirds times two thirds times two thirds, which is two times two times eight, which is eight over twenty seven. Now, therefore, if I want to look at the chances of getting one yellow, I add up all the probabilities that give me one yellow, which is basically adding up all of these guys here. Uh, which is four, 4 plus 4, which is 8, 10, 18, 19 over 27. That's the chance that I got of getting my one yellow. One yellow being a yellow or a white, at least one of them. Uh, but I could have got that a bit easier because... Um, I should know that probabilities uh, add to equal 1. So if that there is 8 27ths, then these two should add up to 27 over 27, which they do. 
So I could have got this just by subtracting the 8 over 27. Without changing the tree, let's just change the problem a little bit. Um, one of the other ghosts which was there was the blood drinker. And he needed two red to, uh, to, to kill him. Now, to kill him, this, two red, the chance of getting a successful one on these, these branches here are still the same. Still the same, one red, one white is still a third, and two thirds chance of failure, and, and that applies at each step. So I can keep the same tree and just investigate it for, for getting two reds, but this time uh, I need at least two, two successful uh, atoms in the, on the tree to get my two red. So that one there is okay, and that one there is okay, and that one there is okay, but this one here is no use to us. The, because that's what we get one, this one works, and none of these works at all. So basically I add up this one. Oh, I think we'll change that notation. So that's 127th plus 227th plus 227th plus 227th, plus 227th which is 7 over 27. So if I wanted to kill the blood drinker with 2 red, then we have to use... Uh, the two or more options and that comes out at 7 over 27. Uh, so, uh, we'll maybe have some more examples in class based around this one, but that's basically how you construct a tree diagram.